Hell yeah. Give it up for Tattooed Mommy. Give it up for Tan, everybody. Frank Hose. Frank's one of the best comedy shows here in Philadelphia. How are you guys? How are we feeling tonight? Woo! Just gonna keep making you woo. That's fun. Here's, here comes another woo. I just quit my job. Was that what? I thought this dump would be proud of me for that. <laughs> Scum of society, that I am no longer participating in capitalism. You guys love it. <laughs> yeah, I quit my job. And one thing I did not realize would happen when I quit my job is that I am just burning through toilet paper. Can't, can't keep up with this stuff. Losing a lot of money on toilet paper. Before, I was actively making money while using toilet paper at work, and now. It's like I'm restarting life, it's tough. <laughs> you don't realize how much that stuff costs. But yeah, I have, uh, I have IBS, you guys know about IBS? Yeah. Uh, everyone here, eating and drinking this place. Uh, yeah, I have IBS, if you're not familiar with it, you weren't one of the wooers. Uh, IBS stands for, uh, I be shitting. <laughs> be shitting all the time, everywhere I go, non-stop, it's a problem. <laughs> and uh, if you're British, it stands for, uh, I'm bloody shitting. <laughs> but also, I'm not British, and I can say that I am a bloody shitting. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that you guys know that. It's a problem. Uh, one solution I found for my IBS is that I invested in a bidet. We got a bidet people in here? Bidet people? Woo! Hell yeah. A couple people living the lifestyle, the rest of you. Peasants, just dry wiping your ass. I don't even know about. The days of me, I'm never going back. I'm not gonna poop here because they don't have a bidet. What kind of place is this? I'm gonna downvote this on the album. Any business that doesn't have a bidet is not my business anymore. It's a problem. But I'm done. I'm, the day, amazing. I, I sit down to pee now. That's how good that thing is. It's so good. It's so nice. No more peanut buttery dumps for me, you know? It's, 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 never going back. My friend doesn't like the bidet. They're like, I don't want a, I don't want a wet ass. You guys get that? I don't want a wet ass. I just want to be covered in shit everywhere. They go. Just covered. In it. It's disgusting. Also handy to have a bidet is a guy who who likes to occasionally uh, eat some ass. You know, it's a nice tool to, to have in the arsenal. Have a lady over and be like, Hey, babe, why don't you go? Uh, why don't you have a spray for me? <laughs> a quick spray. And then she'll go to the bathroom and she will not come back. <laughs> because that thing's gonna get her off way better than I can. <laughs> I'm actually uh, not sending randos to get their butt sprayed. Uh, because I am, I am in a very successful relationship. You know, that's cool, right? You know, yeah. I'll let her know. Uh, it's going good. It's good. This is the best relationship I've ever been in. We recently hit our two year anniversary, that's special, right? It's the longest, yeah. longest relationship I've been in a while. Also realized it's the longest I've been off dating apps. That's a bigger leap, I feel like it's a bigger, you know, two year relationship, about a year off the apps. It feels good. Uh, feels, feels great. Can't be sure that first year, you know, you gotta stay on there, just in case. But it's going good. Uh, unfortunately, her parents uh, don't like me. Uh, Nice. Yeah, I don't like you. Tight, dude. I guess this is a place for people whose parents don't like you. Yeah. Yeah, her parents don't like me, but I am adopted. This has happened before, so. When we started dating, we were like, weren't sure what we were looking for. You know, we were like, oh, what is this? You're like, maybe, maybe this will be casual sex. Maybe we'll be friends with benefits. I was like, you know what? I'm traditional. Just cheat on me, okay? <laughs> Don't be old fashioned. <laughs> but it's going good. We recently moved in together. That's cool. We moved in together. Yeah. My first time living with a partner. That's special. Also, partner her word. She makes me say that. So, I have to say that. She likes that because she is a, a queer woman. And she does not want anyone to know that she is dating a man. So <laughs> you guys can keep that in the DL. I'm sure she appreciate that. It's going good. Partners, partners growing on me. I like it. You know, I like partner because it's on. We're trying to solve a mystery. 
every mystery is, why are you mad at me today? <laughs> it's usually a joke I wrote, which you didn't care for. <laughs> but yeah, it's going great. Uh, here's my favorite part of living together. We have separate bedrooms. You guys into it? Woo! Oh yeah, a couple cool people, some clingy dorks, that's okay. <laughs> uh, I love separate bedrooms, it rules. All I guess we can still feel kind of single, you know? Go to bed in our separate bedrooms. I'll shoot her a text. It's going on you up. You wanna come you wanna come by? <laughs> she comes over, we have sex. And afterwards I'm like, you should you should go. You should leave. You <laughs> have to leave. No, I am a gentleman. I always uh, walk her to her door. Okay, guys? <laughs> Chivalry is not it. Yeah, separate bedrooms rules. Some people are uptight about separate bedrooms. They're weird about it. But I don't know if you guys have ever seen marketing for bigger beds. Those things are designed for people that hate each other. <laughs> you guys remember the Tempur-Pedic mattress? You guys know that commercial? The guy's jumping on the bed and the, mat, the wine doesn't spill? That's not who they made that bed for. <laughs> people weren't calling mattress companies like, oh, I can't jump on my bed without spilling my wine. <laughs> what do you have for that? No, those mattresses are like, I have to sleep next to someone I hate. What can you do for me? <laughs> what do you got? Uh, my married friends, they have a, uh, a California King. Do you guys know about the California King? Yep. Yeah. It's a bed about the size of this room. And <laughs> it's designed so you can sleep on the opposite side of the, the room. The person <laughs> I feel like we could save a lot of mattress material if we just admitted we wanted separate bedrooms. <laughs> Some people are weird about it, though. I have a friend who was like, aren't you scared that she's gonna cheat on you? It's like, you know we started in like separate houses, right? That's... <laughs> I was like, I'm more worried about you, honestly. Like, what kind of relationship are you in? You're worried your person's cheating on you in the next room? <laughs> she goes to the bathroom, he's like, at the door, he's like, you better not be sucking any dicks in there. <laughs> Keep the door open. <laughs> Also, if my girlfriend wants to cheat on me, I do comedy. I'm out every night, all right? You guys, you guys think she's cheating on me? <laughs> oh, that would be a bummer. Okay. But I am grateful to be in a relationship, though. I am grateful because I was, uh, I, I was single and dating in the pandemic. Anyone else date during the pandemic? Yeah. 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 Yes. A couple of, right, bunch of sad folks. That's cool. That's, that's cool. <laughs> it was a weird time to date. I was single a friend for so long. I remember one point, one of my married buddies, he was like, oh, dude, I'm so jealous you're single. You just get to fuck whoever you want. <laughs> and just a heads up, you can actually never do that. <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> you need their, their permission. It's really important. <laughs> but yeah, during the pandemic, I remember being on Tinder, and this woman in her bio said, don't bother if you're one of those sheeple who wears a mask. <laughs> Holy shit, this lady is gonna have unprotected sex with me. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I don't know about COVID, we're gonna we're gonna spread something, right? <laughs> so, when you're single for a long time, you learn red flags, you know, you learn your red flags, my red flags, everything you've seen about me. Uh, <laughs> but I was on a date with this woman, she big red flag, uh, she told me that she thinks that watching porn is the same as cheating. <laughs> Strongly disagree. I was like, miss, I've already cheated on you on this date. <laughs> I'm so sorry. sorry. it took so long in the bathroom. Uh, I was like, man, if she feels that strongly about porn, she's definitely not gonna like when I fuck other people, right? She's not gonna like at all. It's gonna be a bad sport. <laughs> I, I uh, had this woman invited me home with her when I was dating. This was when I was dating. <laughs> no one invites me home with them anymore, and that's okay. Uh, this woman invited me back to her place, and we were fooling around, and then she's like, she's like, Ashley John, I don't want to have sex with you. And uh, yeah, we stopped, because I'm just a great guy, and <laughs> just an ally. If I'm, okay, uh, <laughs> as good as I get. So I, I didn't have sex with that woman. And then she was like, I'm sorry, I'm just like not comfortable being the kind of person who sleeps with two guys on back-to-back -back nights. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you didn't need to say any of those things. <laughs> I 
we were done. We stopped. Good. And then she's like, I'm oh, sorry. I just have this date tomorrow night. And as soon as you know, well, that's good for you, because I was here first, so that's not how that went, okay. <laughs> tell you this story, and then I'll leave, I'm sorry. Uh, I used to love sex on a first date. You guys fuck with sex on a first date? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of cool people here, that's awesome. I love sex on a first date, because you know what that means. No second date. No second date, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're done dating that person. You've achieved dating. Uh, that's the whole point. So yeah, uh, I was on dating this woman, she invited me home with her. A different thing happened in the last story. Uh, <laughs> oh. When she goes back to her place, comes on to me very aggressively. And she's like, hey, just to let you know, I like it rough. I was like, all right, I think I can handle that. And then as things escalated, she was like, okay, now I need you to punch me in the face. And I was like, oh man, it turns out I do not like it rough. I'm so sorry. I did not punch that lady in the face. Uh, she told me that that made me a little bitch. <laughs> I was like, honestly, if I was punching you, you'd be saying the same thing. So, <laughs> I didn't really have punch her. Also, I didn't realize this. I mean, agreeing to be rough with her apparently meant that I was consented to her. Also, beating the shit out of me. Didn't know that was part of the deal. That lady hurt me so much. I'm a hairy guy. I have a lot of chest hair. Uh, she took that. <laughs> So the next morning we get up and she's like, hey, you know, we could do this again. But you'd have to step your game up. I was like, oh, shit, man. I was like, well, you were great for material, so yes, let's go out again. <laughs> On the second date, uh, she told me that she had voted for Trump. I was like, you're gonna punch the shit out of this. I'm gonna beat that lady up. You guys seem pretty cool with it. This is, you guys are amazing. Get up your awesome host, Tan, everybody.